Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Rush Mini Stack by Rush FPV. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and soon I'm going to feature it in a build video. In terms of packaging, inside the bag of the Rush Mini Stack you can find a 4-in-1 ESC, an F7 flight controller and the VTX which the stack is based on. In addition you are getting an XT30 battery connector which is pre-soldered to 16 AWG silicon wires. A 35 volts 417 microfarad capacitor, a bag with M2 screws and spacers, and these JST connectors, which will enable you to connect your receiver, camera, and an optional LED unit to the flight controller. The Rush Mini Stack is based on these three components. The bottom board of the stack is a 30 ampere BLA32 4 in 1 ESC. It features a built in current sensor and supports up to 5S LiPo batteries. The motor soldering pads are pretty big and can be found only on the bottom side of the 4-in-1 ESC and the connection between the ESC and the flight controller is done using pin headers. The Rush Matrix 4-in-1 ESC is using 20x20 20 20 M2 mounting holes. Its outer dimensions are 31.9x31.6x5mm and it weighs 6.6 grams. The next component in the center of the stack is a 20x20 20 20 F7 flight controller. It came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.0 and it's using the Rush Core 7 firmware. The Rush Core F7 flight controller features an MPU 6000 gyro chip which is soft mounted over here on top of the flight controller. On the front you can find a JST connector for the camera which supports camera control. On its rear side you can find two connectors for the radio receiver and an LED unit. On its left side over here you can find pads for a buzzer. You are going to mount the VTX on top of it using these pin headers. On its bottom side next to the VTX connector you can find three pads that are going to enable you to set the voltage of the VTX to either 5 volts or to the battery voltage. Now as you can see, somehow by default it is set to 5 volts, which is wrong, since the minimum working voltage of the Rush Tank Ultimate Mini is 7 volts. In addition, the smart audio feature of the VTX wasn't pre-configured, so you'll need to set it to UART5, and maybe these two mistakes happen, because this is an early production unit. The signal pad of the radio receiver connector is mapped to UART2, and you can either set it to the RX pad or the TX pad. By default it is set to RX, but if you'd like you can unbridge these two pads and bridge the center one with the right one and then it's going to be set to TX2. In addition you can also set the voltage of the receiver, by default it is 5V, but if you are going to unbridge these two pads you can bridge the center one with the left one and then it's going to be set to 3.3V which is commonly used on DSMX receivers. As I mentioned before, the flight controller is connected to the 4-in-1 ESC using these pin headers, which is something that I'm pretty sure that not all of you are going to like. And on the other side of this connector, you can find an expansion pad, which is probably going to be used on other product, since when using this stack, it's going to be blocked by the 4-in-1 ESC. In addition to this expansion part, you can find RX5 and RX3 pads over here, and as far as I can tell it's going to be pretty hard to add peripherals such as a GPS to this flight controller. Now unlike the 4-in-1 ESC, the flight controller is using M3 20x20 mounting holes, but it's using M2 spacers which are glued to the top of the flight controller. Its outer dimensions are 29x29.9x7.1mm and it weighs 5.8 grams. The last component which is going to be mounted on the top of the stack is the Rush FPV Tank Ultimate Mini VTX. It supports 48 channels, features TBS Smart Audio Protocol, has a selectable output strength of 25, 200, 500 and 800 milliwatts, and it's using an MMCX connector. I have recently reviewed this VTX and I highly recommend it, and in case you're interested you can click here to watch my full review. The Tank Ultimate Mini is using 20x20 20 20 M2 mounting holes. Its outer dimensions are 28.9, by 28.5 by 4.8 millimeters and it weighs 5.2 grams. The outer dimensions of the stack after assembling it are 33.3 by 32 by 17.3 millimeters and its total weight including the M2 spacers and screws is 20.3 grams. So overall I think that this stack is using high quality components and I'm looking forward to testing it out 
since so far I've been really impressed with Rush FEV products. I do hope that these pin headers connectors are going to be reliable and it could have been extra nice if they could have added another port on the side for adding peripherals such as the GPS. And instead of making you choose between RX2 and TX2, add another pin on the radio receiver connector. Now by the way, before wrapping up this video, the included JST connectors are quite unique since they have this security option. So once you're going to connect, for example, the camera connector to the flight controller, it's going to be secured and you will need to lift its top part like that in order to release it. I'm going to feature this stack on an upcoming video, so stay tuned, and in case you have any questions about it, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.